evening to you and thank you for joining us on Y254 Updates. My name is Patricia Muriuki and today we have a very interesting topic or I'd rather say a topic that most people don't like talking about but right here on Y254 we're going to be having the conversation about reproductive health bill and contraceptives which just try to seek really to understand what really does this bill entail? Why is it that many people, many institutions are against this bill? And we also try to talk about contraceptives, that is accessibility, availability, that is, do we have the right or reliable information as far as contraceptives when we get to our health facilities? And to help us talk about this topic tonight, we have two amazing people who I have seen really tackle these uh, topics in different um platforms and I would not have thought of any other uh, people to help us discuss this tonight and we have Peter Ngure who is a director Pathways Policy Institute. We also have Shalene Mumani who is a co-executive director Young Women's Leadership Institute. Talk to us across our social media platforms that is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. Thank you guys for finding the time to be here mm -hmm. and we would like I would like us to tackle the two. We had uh, September 26th was the uh, contraceptive day. This is something that has been celebrated since uh, 2007. And the theme for this year was sustainable family planning in COVID-19 era and domestic financing. And my first question, how are we able as a country, how are we going to manage to sustain family planning even post COVID-19? Shalene. Thank you so much, Patricia. You're welcome. Uh, so, um, I think sustaining uh, family planning, mm -hmm. this is an issue that we've really, that, has, that we've had conversations about mm -hmm. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And note that uh, it has uh, created, bar uh, like COVID-19 has really created new barriers. Mm -hmm. These have been pre-existing barriers, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it has actually amplified the, the unmet needs of, uh, of people in terms of access to uh, family planning. Mm -hmm. And that's why we see now that we are really having these conversations like they are new. Mm -hmm. So for me, these have been pre-existing uh, structure, uh, like structure barriers mm -hmm. that we needed to talk about even before COVID-19. COVID okay, yeah. uh, Peter, how do you think that we are able as a country to sustain family planning? Even now has this year's theme was sustainable family planning in COVID-19 era. How we don't put so much pressure in doing it now and then post-COVID we <coughs> find ourselves in situations whereby people can still not assess family planning. Yeah, thanks. I think uh, we've been learning lessons mm -hmm. and uh, COVID uh, is a blessing in this case because it helped us learn new lessons mm -hmm. around contraceptives. Mm -hmm. This country has moved from about having 18% contraceptive prevalence rate in mm -hmm. uh, the 60s to what we are doing now, 56%. Mm -hmm. And with the hope that by 2022 we can be able to go to 65%, and by 2030 we could be playing at 75%. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the COVID has brought out new ways of giving contraceptives. First, uh, contraceptives were only available at the facility level. Yeah. And so a lot of women uh, had to go to a healthcare provider for mm -hmm. them to get uh, commodities. Right now in COVID times, commodities can be gotten by community health workers mm -hmm. and brought to the, to the citizens. Mm -hmm. So it has changed a bit on that. The other one is that uh, if it spills from government facilities, women would only get a, a refill for a month. With COVID, now we can get a refill for three months which means now women don't, don't have to keep coming to the facility all the time for them to come and get commodities. So that's another change that has happened. We are now moving to the era of uh, self-care, mm -hmm. where you can inject yourself with family planning, uh, with your contraceptive choice, especially mm -hmm. those injectables. Mm -hmm. So that's also another change that has happened now. Mm -hmm. And the conversation is growing. And with the, the general issue of teenage pregnancy coming up, now the conversation has come back to talk, can we give our young women mm -hmm. uh, commodities because mm -hmm. we've been given information and when we know they're sexually active we give them commodities chini mm -hmm. but now the conversation is open how do we give them commodities and even moving the conversation from do we have to always get these commodities contraceptives is not uh is is, is not medicine mm -hmm. you know it's not yeah. uh uh, see, mm -hmm. you have to get a prescription and mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. in fact now it's time we started having the conversation should we have contraceptives in our 
open shops in mm -hmm. our supermarket, mm -hmm. like we see in the US where Walmart, you can go and buy your pills and mm -hmm. buy your stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get them from, so there's a whole shift and that's what will sustain contraceptive conversation mm -hmm. post COVID because now we are able, we have seen that it's workable. Mm -hmm. Just like we did with the MPESA, we used to do 70,000, now we yeah. can do 300,000. Yeah, it's Now true. we know. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, COVID has had it good side okay yeah. uh the other thing is when we talk accessibility and availability of um information before we even now get to uh, these uh, commodities are the services really available to people do we have the right information when a young lady walks into a health facility or when a young lady is having um consultation with a med with a medical personnel and they are looking for options that they want to use whatever methods they that, that they want to use Charlene, do you think we have reliable information or, or data in terms of what we get to offer to people before they make the decision on what method to use as far as family planning is concerned? Um, information is very, very crucial mm -hmm. when it comes to access to contraception mm -hmm. because everybody reacts differently. Every human being reacts differently or every woman reacts differently with the mm -hmm. different methods of contraception. Mm -hmm. yeah? So for me, I think information is very crucial mm -hmm. and uh, in our health health uh, uh, systems i think this is not really taken seriously mm -hmm. because information information is never is not given like the right way mm -hmm. there's no comprehensive information that is given on uh, different types of metho methods mm -hmm. when a, a, a woman or a girl um, accesses a health uh, facility, facility mm -hmm. they do, they're not like given that information that they need, mm -hmm. you know, because number one, they're faced with discrimination, there's discrimination that comes with age, discrimination mm -hmm. that comes with class. There's no confidentiality. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so that really affects how even the kind of information that you're given, is it really um, comprehensive? Mm -hmm. Is it, does it support how, how you also need to like, um, what you, you'd like to hear okay. with regard to access to those services, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. there are so many myths around uh, contraception, okay. you know, and that's why information is very important to really demystify mm -hmm. that certain uh, methods do not work for people and certain methods work for people. Mm -hmm. And for us moving forward, like uh, uh, Peter said, that uh, con contracep uh, contraceptions should be available in our supermarkets, your in shops. our shops, mm -hmm. you know, information is needed, you mm -hmm. know. First, I said that we react differently. Mm -hmm. And if a woman or a girl does not know how they react to that kind of method, mm -hmm. then it will maybe um, react differently with her body, which mm -hmm. will not, uh, which may, uh, may affect her in a bad way, you know. Mm -hmm. So then, I think it will really be important to even embrace comprehensive sexuality education mm -hmm. so that then young people, adolescent girls get to learn from an early age mm -hmm. on, on certain things, on body autonomy, on how to really embrace themselves and take care of themselves mm -hmm. and also access to com contraception. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Peter, I believe that probably you might have done uh, studies or found yourself in a place where you've assessed information that uh, gets to tell us about accessibility and availability. What would you say is uh, the response that probably consumers, that is now the women and the young ladies, get to give as far as the type of information that they get from facilities? Yeah, a lot of studies have been done on what uh, Charlene mentioned called unmet need for family planning. Mm -hmm. Why is it called unmet need? It means that a woman mm -hmm. really does want to take contraceptives, mm -hmm. but is unable to mm -hmm. get contraceptives. Okay. So there, mm -hmm. there are many reasons that have been given for unmet need. Mm -hmm. And the first, the first reason is information. Mm -hmm. The fact that in our health facilities, uh, the, health, the, the number of health workers who are given the task to man the maternal neonatal child health unit, which mm -hmm. is which has family planning. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's one nurse, mm -hmm. and she's having 20 clients in a day, 30 clients. Mm -hmm. That nurse cannot be able to comprehensively give you information. Mm -hmm. So she, a woman comes and I'm going, family planning. You're given mm -hmm. what is available. Mm -hmm. You're not even mm -hmm. told there are 10 types of methods. Mm -hmm. This is the kind yeah. of method you need. 
then you, you, you also go back and, and decide for yourself mm -hmm. which method mm -hmm. works for me. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. as, as Charlene has rightfully mentioned, methods affect women differently. Yeah. There are those uh, methods, there are hormonal methods that cannot be given to people with diabetes, to people with other kinds of uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. There are non-hormonal that before had some metallic things that couldn't be given to some kind of people. Mm -hmm. There are people who react differently to injectables. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so, so information has been the biggest hindrance mm -hmm. to realizing uh, contraception and family planning in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And, and mo moving forward, I see a lot of... Uh, and this information should not just be given by healthcare providers in health mm -hmm. facilities. Mm -hmm. This information should come to schools. Mm -hmm. This information mm -hmm. should come to churches. This mm -hmm. information should come to open spaces mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. people now can be able to, because human beings access information differently. Yeah. Rarely, except adverts on, on condoms. Mm -hmm. I don't see adverts on any other contraceptives on our TV. I've not seen someone say, Jadel, this is the way to use it. Mm -hmm. Or uh, IUD, this mm -hmm. is the way it's inserted. Because as it was mentioned, the myths around contraceptives are so many. Mm -hmm. And if we don't fight myths with the right information, then mm -hmm. we will always mm -hmm. have this gap. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like it that you've mentioned um, the myths and conceptions around um, uh, contraceptives mm. and you've mentioned that the church you should have this information in the church you should have this information at the school but now when we get let us go uh, a little bit to the reproductive health bill that is just a bill I just trying to advocate for some of the things that we're to talking about tonight and many people have come out especially if the Kenya b bishops have come out and say no, we do not advocate for this, we have the Kenya, uh, the Catholic uh, the Catholic Church that has for the longest time been against um, family planning and all these things, and we also have individuals in the community who feel this is not the right way. So how now are we? Do we bridge? Do we build a bridge between making these people understand understand things are changing? Probably we can try and adapt to a certain thing without people feeling that we're stepping and forgetting our morals, Peter. It's, it's, it's interesting, the, the, the people who are fighting the reproductive health bill mm -hmm. have not come out to say specifically, mm -hmm. this is what I don't like about the bill. Mm -hmm. yeah. The bill is very comprehensive. The mm -hmm. bill, actually, the first bill came in 2014. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, the parliament lapsed in 2015. Yeah. Yeah. Susan Kihika. And mm -hmm. Susan has brought a bill that encompasses all the challenges that were in the previous bill. Mm -hmm. Family planning. Mm -hmm. it, the bill says, Every person has a right to access reproductive health, but then mm -hmm. she goes down and says, if it's around uh, young people, then the, the parental or the guardian consent on the information is mm -hmm. required. So mm -hmm. the, the, the thing that the church is fighting that we'll give 10-year-old contraceptives mm -hmm. is, is not true. Mm -hmm. the, the, the other thing around it is that it, it is says, uh, a lot of people are saying this bill just allows people to hold some get uh, contraceptives. Mm -hmm. And the bill says, if you are accessing family planning, the healthcare provider, gives you the advantages and disadvantages of each method mm -hmm. and then you choose that's mm -hmm. the information that we are looking for on, on, on this on this mm -hmm. and the bill also has so much more it has about safe motherhood mm -hmm. which is a whole chapter mm -hmm. it has issues of adolescent sexual reproductive health mm -hmm. it has issues on safe motherhood mm -hmm. it has issues on uh, a termination of pregnancy depending mm -hmm. with uh, what the, and, and our position gives that right that yeah if the life the mother, of the, the mother is at the yeah. mother is at risk yeah. or the child is at risk mm -hmm. then I, I'm a health practitioner can be able to go ahead and make that decision mm -hmm. so that bill just brings to life what mm -hmm. is in the constitution but a lot of us would want to say take that and say this is abortion or this is giving young people mm -hmm. contraceptives or this is kwaribu uh, watotoetu okay. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's a very big statement. But I'll cut you short and have us take a very short break here on Y254, but don't go too far away. We'll be right back with more. Y254. Imagine. Thank you for staying with us on Y254 Updates. And if you're just joining us tonight, we're talking about the Reproductive Health Bill and Contraceptives. And with me in studio to, help, uh, to talk about this, we have Peter Ngure and we have Shaleen Momani. Talk to us across our social media platforms. That is at Y254 Channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Murioki. So during the break, we had a very small conversation among the three of us where we got to talk about, we feel like women have the bigger burden on carrying so much weight and having to do with so, so very many things, whereas the men are just given like the lighter duties. And I want us to talk about male 
uh, involvement as far as contraceptive is concerned, do is it not right that they, they probably should also be on family planning? And Shalene, as a woman, what is your thought and what is your opinion on that issue? I think women have really been burdened mm -hmm. by society, you know, like women have carried like the reproductive uh, role mm -hmm. for a very long time mm -hmm. and all the blame uh, is always on women. Mm -hmm. Anything that happens first, women do not have like the right to choose mm -hmm. whatever they want mm -hmm. to do with their body. Mm -hmm. They can't choose the kind of contraception they want mm -hmm. unless the partner is involved mm -hmm. and the partner also has to like make the decision at times. And is not using it. Exactly. <laughs> the man has to like, he, most of the time it's the man making decisions on a woman's body. For me, it is really, really problematic mm -hmm. and it's so stressful for a woman. Mm -hmm. And it's really time that we have that conversation that men mm -hmm. should also, I think, should also uh, get, on get contraception. Okay. okay, Peter, yeah. you are a man, and I'm so glad that you are a man who is advocating for contraceptives because you really get to give us the yeah. best <laughs> advice or rather the best opinion on this. What is your thought on male involvement on family planning? This is a shared responsibility. Mm. You know, a lot of uh, people refuse to have this honest conversation. Mm -hmm. for, for you to get pregnant in 78% of our setups, mm -hmm. it's a man and a woman. Yeah. Now we have yeah. other ways, we have surrogacy and mm -hmm. we have IVF and mm -hmm. that. But normally, the, mm -hmm. the natural one is a man and a woman. Yeah. So, a, any time when men now start saying, why did you get pregnant? Mm -hmm. uh, you ask, why are you not the one who yeah. not protective measures mm -hmm. and ensure that I don't get pregnant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next time we give this, these responsibilities to, to both genders, yeah. Yeah. men and women at 50%, mm -hmm. where men, men have condoms, <laughs> can use condoms, mm -hmm. and all the time I hear men saying, oh, me, I don't like using condoms. Mm -hmm. You think women like mm -hmm. being injected all the time? Or being, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. That's, the, that's, that's the, the mentality that we need to put, that this is an mm. equal... Uh, yeah, it's supposed table. to be a shared responsibility. So a lot, a lot mm -hmm. of researchers, uh, and, and I'm glad I have worked with a few, mm -hmm. uh, who are doing there is a group called Male Contraceptive Now, and there is a male involvement and contraceptives from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Those organizations, are, MCI is really working hard mm -hmm. to ensure that there is a new product. Mm -hmm. and they are doing a lot of research on new pills that men can take or a new patches that men can also patch themselves mm -hmm. and not be able to provide live uh, spams. Mm -hmm. and, and the conversation is ongoing, but unless men accept to go for trials, mm -hmm. because every commodity when it's out there, it's yeah. yeah. corona has vaccine has, has been through, through a trial. trial. Yeah. We need enough men who can go through a trial. Mm -hmm. We have vasectomy for men. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can cut it and not sire, and mm -hmm. that does. Because the, the other challenge with men is the fear. Mm -hmm. Because we have seen the effect of what some contraceptives have done to, to women. women. Mm -hmm. some, mm -hmm. the, the side effect, what mm -hmm. we call the side effect, which mm -hmm. are natural things that happen. Mm -hmm. Men are very much afraid mm -hmm. of having side effects by themselves. Mm -hmm. So man thinks, ah, if uh, she takes this and she has a headache, oh, well, so well. if I take her, I'll have a headache. Mm -hmm. and so men love themselves too much, I guess. <laughs> But the thing is, we have to uh, have this conversation. We have to tell men that these commodities are safe. Mm -hmm. We have to allow them to start taking up. And then we need male champions. Mm -hmm. Because this conversation, we can't just be saying men, men, men. Mm -hmm. We have to have them in the house saying, these are the methods. Even training girls about methods. Even training other boys about methods. And this conversation should also start earlier. Because by the time I'm 30, 35, then you're coming to tell me now, take up this responsibility uh -huh. which you are not used to. I mean, it takes a lot of time for someone to, to get that into them. But if you allow people from when they are young to know, as a boy, as a girl, it's equal responsibility mm -hmm. both at home, both in school, mm -hmm. uh, to your family, to yeah. dating. It's yeah, it's a 50-50 situation. Let's keep moving this equal conversation from when we are young to the old age. And yeah. I think that's mm -hmm. the only solution we have. For okay, uh, a very tough question. It's a yes or no. If today a product is brought contraceptive for men, would you be open to sit down and talk about with your wife about it and go with that plan? Oh yes. 
thank you very much. So <laughs> all men should follow. <laughs> yeah. Point, why, why it's important for, for that. Mm -hmm. A lot of men, and I, I, this is, I'm talking about men, mm -hmm. a lot of men are accused of uh, impregnating girls and they run away. Yeah. They ran away because they, were, they had no, no way to solve that problem. They were not ready. Like if they had a method and they had taken a pill or they had taken a part. They don't have they to run said, away. They don't have to run away. So okay. <laughs> so, Charlene, how do we now uh, normalize our cons uh, con communications or con conversations around contraceptives in our society? How can we normalize that? Normalizing it means that we all have, it is a collective responsibility mm -hmm. from uh, religious leaders because we know religion really plays a very big role mm -hmm. in um, modeling how we behave, how, uh, how like our characteristics in terms of how we think, mm -hmm. we behave, mm -hmm. how we engage with, with other people. Mm -hmm. In like just changing their perception. Okay. They should, I don't, th they're, they're really uh, side, uh, uh, two-sided mm -hmm. because religion has really been a great impact, mm -hmm. a negative impact when it comes to choices mm -hmm. in terms of reproductive health. Okay. Yeah? In, so then having conversations with stakeholders such as religious leaders, mm -hmm. political actors, mm -hmm. young people, uh, parents, mm -hmm. you know, parents also... Uh, it's have a really role. A, a very have a very tough role mm -hmm. to speak to their children, mm -hmm. but then this role is also left to to mentors and peer counselors, and that those children who actually like adolescent girls who don't have mentors and and um, and peer counselors. Okay. You know? So they lack this kind of information. So for me, I think we should just. We should just engage everyone. It is a collective responsibility for everyone to come together to normalize mm -hmm. this, this conversation. conversation. Okay. That is second, Peter. What are your final thoughts on this topic that we've discussed tonight? Uh, time is right for mm -hmm. us to, to allow, uh, to stop hiding behind morals, to mm -hmm. stop hiding ethics or tradition. Mm -hmm. It's time we came out and realized that uh, these children who are getting pregnant are our children, we mm -hmm. need to take care of them. Yeah. Even if mm -hmm. you're a man, remember you will get daughters, you will get granddaughters, mm -hmm. so take care of them, don't just say it's a women issue. Uh -huh. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's our issue, all of us. And uh, to our governments, continue investing in family planning. Mm -hmm. We have uh, not had a budget line specifically for family planning, mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. commodities mm -hmm. which have been donor driven. As governments, we are asking them, as national and county government, mm -hmm. create budget lines for family planning. Okay. Thank you very much. And I hope people who are watching us tonight, you've learned something new, or rather you have probably added something to the knowledge that you already had. We're going to have probably schedule for another interview. There's quite a lot that we've not managed to talk about, but we'll look for more time to really share the right information with you guys. Thank you very much. My name is Patricia Morioki. Do have yourselves a very good night.